Okay guys, get out your review packet. Today what we're going to look at is photosynthesis and respiration. Now remember, whenever we're doing these two, we always want to make sure that we write down the formula. So if you think it's a photosynthesis or respiration question, write down that formula right away in order to assist you in answering the questions. First up, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis uses inorganic molecules to make organic molecules. That's going to be how they write it, which can be kind of confusing. So my advice is to make sure that you identify what some of these words mean. So here, organic molecules. Remember, photosynthesis is going to make glucose. The chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. It's organic because it has both carbon and hydrogen in there. Another thing to note is that instead of saying make, a lot of times they're going to use the word synthesize. Remember, synthesize is really just a fancy word that means to build or to make. Next up, we have the formula. This formula is really important to know. And again, I jot this down any time it's a photosynthesis question. The left-hand side, those are going to be my reactants. When they're talking about reactants, a lot of times they're going to say something like use. Over here, over the arrow, we're always going to have an enzyme. Remember, an enzyme speeds up a chemical reaction. An enzyme can also be called an organic catalyst. Over here, we have our products. For products, sometimes you're going to see words like release or give off or produce. If you're looking at the formula, the next thing that I would say to note is that glucose, C6H12O6, they refer to that as your chemical energy. And if we're following our energy through this equation, the energy starts off as light. Remember, we need a continuous input of light in order to produce food. And then it's changed into this chemical energy which is C6H12O6. Again, that's just the chemical formula for glucose. Photosynthesis can only occur inside of producers and autotrophs. Examples of producers and autotrophs can include things like plants and algae. And this happens inside of the chloroplast. The chloroplast is really just an organelle that's located inside of a plant cell. Plants also have an adaptation that's known as a guard cell. These are cells that have a specialized function. What do they do? Well, they open and close in order to exchange gases. What types of gases? That's things like carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water. This allows them to maintain homeostasis or dynamic equilibrium. That's ensuring that you have the proper amount of these gases at all, time, at all times. And our homeostasis graph typically is represented like this. If we look at this diagram, these are both from the Regents exam. Notice here they have this space in between them. We call that the stomy. The part that we're really interested in, though, is going to be the guard cells. The guard cells are referring to the two cells that surround the stomy. So right here, that's a, stom that's a guard cell, and then that's a guard cell as well. So I would label these. Sorry. I'd label these guard cell. Over here, this is a cross section of a plant, of a leaf. Those two cells on either side, not the space, but the two cells on either side, those again are guard cells. And remember, guard cells open and close to make sure that they have enough oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. And we're talking about water vapor in this case. Our next equation, which we need to know, is going to be for respiration. 
Remember, respiration converts chemical energy stored in the bonds of organic molecules into usable energy known as ATP. They write this again a little bit confusing. They talk about chemical energy in bonds of organic molecules. This is all again referring to glucose. We haven't actually changed what the chemical energy is. So if we were looking at this formula down here, again we have our reactants on the left hand side and we have our products on the right hand side. Note again over the arrow that is going to be where we put our enzyme. Our formula here, C6H12O6, that is our chemical energy. On the right hand side, our ATP, that's what we refer to as our usable energy. That means that's the energy that your cells actually use in order to go through those life processes that we talked about earlier in the year. Another thing to note is that our energy is stored. Energy is stored in chemical bonds. That's why we say over here, right, this is chemical energy. All those bonds, like when we made those ball and stick models earlier in the year, those all represent stored energy. Finally, this process, respiration, it occurs in all organisms. That means that plants, animals, protists, bacteria, all of these are undergoing respiration. Now bacteria are prokaryotes, so they don't have mitochondria. But plants and animals, since they are eukaryotes, they do have a mitochondria. Remember, the mighty mitochondria is going to be where respiration takes place. Again, the mitochondria is an organelle. One other thing that I would just like to note is that when we're talking about something like photosynthesis or respiration, these both represent a process. So photosynthesis is a process, and then respiration is another example of a process.